You just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast in the world on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Okay, we got a great giveaway for you today. Here's what I want you to do. In the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, leave your favorite movie quote in the comments, okay? If Doug picks it, here's what we're going to send to your door, a box of Organifi's immunity, okay? It's awesome. By the way, we give away stuff all the time, but you got to do it in the first 24 hours. You got to leave a comment in the first 24 hours. The only way to do that is to turn on your notifications and subscribe to this channel so you know when we drop episodes. Do that right now. Also, before we start the podcast, we're running a huge promotion right now. Two of our workout programs are 50% off, and one of our workout bundles is 50% off. Here's what they are. We have MAPS HIT, high-intensity interval training. Then we have MAPS SPLIT. This is a body part split bodybuilder program. And then we have the Bikini Bundle, which is multiple programs put together. All of them 50% off. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code SPRINGBREAK for the 50% off. All right. Enjoy the podcast. I'm no judge or jury, but I can tell you this. He won't sell anybody out to buy his future. Mm. What's that from? Jeez, Young Guns. No. 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 I, I no. feel like that's your one of your favorite Tom Cruise I just Cruise feel movies. like you always uh, quote Young Guns. Scent of a Woman. Oh, Douglas. Damn. One for me. Oh. Money, dude. Wow, that's he knows. I wanted, so I was thinking about this uh, the other night. I was like, you know what would be fun? I want to see. Damn, I, would, I did not think. I wanted to come up with a quote that I thought was popular enough that uh, people listening would be able to figure it out. Somebody would figure it out. But <laughs> you two wouldn't be able to figure it out. So uh, I, I still got it. You, got, well, you got us. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys come up with a popular quote? that the other two guys won't get. I mean, I know that Popular? a lot of our audience will get this quote. That's the idea. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, the idea yeah. the idea is that it's not so obscure that nobody knows what it is, that it's that it's popular, but you you know that the other two hosts won't be able to yeah. figure it out. No, you guys won't get this. Let's uh, hear it. It's very simple, very short. Let's hear it. That's not good oil. That's not okay, good. Does he say it like that? Yeah, that's not good oil. Um, yeah, you guys will never get that one. We're gonna leave it out there too. It's not popular. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be you'll be embarrassed when you re realize where it's from. It sounds like uh, I mean that could be in any movie. I feel like that's Disney Cars. No, yeah, or, <laughs> I'm not gonna. Or there will be blood, or you know, something. No, like no, that. that's not good it's oil. Like I'm not. No, oil. no, I'll, I'll give you one more quote from the same movie. I want to beat him. Actually, does that his voice actually? Does that. I want to beat him. Ooh, that I feel like I know. Yeah. All right. I'm not going to give it away. I think we'll keep uh, it as a secret. What about you, Justin? You got some? Well, you know what we'll do? We'll use it. If nobody yeah, guesses it. You guys will probably know, know this I one. I feel like I know that one. It's yeah. not good oil. And then I want to beat them. Yeah. All right. Go the, ahead, Justin. We, yeah. The, so I used to I used to uh, mess around with my friend. We, we I'd call him and leave him this message all the time for some reason. We just like would watch this movie religiously. So uh, it goes, um, you fat, disgusting slob. You're a goddamn disgrace. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's, I don't know. It's very that is. PC. Is that uh, weird science? No. Uh, is that um, is that the, is that what the same one? As, something about Mary? No. <sighs> All right. Damn. All right. So let's leave those yes. as mysteries. Okay. And then what? We'll I can't do believe Doug got mine. Yeah, I love that movie. So do I. Yeah. I, I love that movie. Well, too. yours was a mainstreamish movie. I, I bet you ours is kind of like. Remember, we're dorks when it comes yeah. to movies. Yeah. No, mine's very mainstream. Is it? Yeah. Okay. That was the idea. You were supposed to pick something pretty mainstream. If you have some like fucking C list movie, I'm no, gonna no, no, off no. At you. My <laughs> movie. When you find out where it's, it's like from, Sundance you're, movie. You're gonna be. <laughs> you're gonna be embarrassed. You're gonna be embarrassed when you. I know. This. I do. I the second quote of it, you yeah. said, I felt like God. I know that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so I felt yeah. like I should. We'll leave it though because we give stuff. Well, that sucks. I lose it my own game. That I wasn't the idea. Him. I thought yeah. I knew for sure you guys wouldn't get mine. I didn't oh, even no. think about it. No, no, we'll, we'll leave it because then what we do is you know we give stuff away uh, on YouTube all the time. So we'll let people guess in the comments, and then mm, whoever okay. guesses both, they'll, okay. they'll enter to win a free. Okay, I like that. Whatever we decide, we're we're yeah. giving away. All right, I like that. You know what I'm saying? I like yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, so Sounds Adam, why why are you so crapped out? Your, your, your energy is a bit. I'm calling you out right now. Ooh. <laughs> a little low energy. Today. You know, I felt that way actually yesterday. Um, I was telling Katrina, I was, uh, got home. And I just felt really kind of down and, and tired. It and I was like, "This is so weird." I go, Diet's fine. I had relatively good sleep. I know we had the 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 uh, time change, so mm -hmm. you know I lost an hour of sleep. So I was like, "Maybe that was it." That's probably it for me. That's what I thought. And then it just it, it, I tried to lay down and take a little bit of a nap, oh, and then no. I still is it, the, is it the pills I give you? So the, <laughs> well, here's the thing. You know what's funny is I actually. I do think that that that's what it was. And what I'm starting to connect is 
almost anything that I've that like all these companies we've tried, and I don't know the brand what you gave me. It wasn't one of our sponsors. I don't want to call them out because I don't want. To- it was yeah. It was just, so Sal does this all the time, right? Where he'll walk over to Justin and I and just hand us pills. <laughs> Here, big, try this. Cheer, try this. Take uh, it. You yeah, know? it's a good time. Yeah, we. And we trust him, right? We trust yeah. him that he's not messing well, with that time us. I gave Didn't you guys, go psychedelic this time. Well, that time yeah. I gave you LSD? Yeah. yeah. Hey, try this real quick. <laughs> yeah. Let me know what happens. But it's a, it was a nootropic, right? Yeah. And, you know, Alpha Brain, there's another a genius brand that I've tried. Um, Alpha Brain made you throw up. I know. I just have a bad reaction. The uh, the Life Aids Rhodiola that yeah. supplement that we talked about the other day. Anything like, that's, that's touted to boost brain function. Yeah. It tends to do that. I, I, I think I'm just... Too smart already? <laughs> no, no. I think you're maxed out. So it has an ad, it, it has an adverse effect. I think you're you maxed know? out. That's what it is. It's like it's just oh, really brilliant people. No, no, if you like, do that yeah. stuff. It's like you got to force. No, no, no. It's like it's like low testosterone. That's what it's like. <laughs> it's like here. low testosterone. Yeah. So if you, you take like horny no, goat bro. weed, it brings you up to your levels. But if you're already peaked, you're already brilliant, <laughs> no. and you take a that. Brain it does the opposite. No, I have a different invite. It does the opposite. I have a different theory. It's like yeah. you have a, 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 a Civic, Honda Civic, and you just maxed it the fuck out. Thousand horsepower. <laughs> you add any more, that shit's gonna explode. Yeah. <laughs> We're no. dealing with a four cylinder engine. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? It's like low testosterone. No, I'm going like, with that. No, you know what's like, funny? You know what you're working with, right? Yeah. 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 You know, no. what's, you know what's funny? Doug responds the same way. I've given Doug so many different nootropics, and he's <laughs> one of them. He told me it made his teeth feel weird. I remember when he said that. He said, like, "What'd you give me? My teeth feel weird." I'm like, oh, it's not supposed to do that. That's very yeah. strange. Yeah, you My gave it. You itch. gave it to me at towards the end of the day, right yeah. after we were getting done. And I actually remember going like, "Oh yeah, that'd be nice." But hopefully, it'll give me like I'll feel up from it. So I felt great from it. I did feel good from it. But um, it is interesting. This highlights the the individual variants from how people can respond to different substances. It really does. It's very very interesting. Yeah. There is one nootropic or you know kind of brain enhancing or whatever you want to call it category of supplement that does that you do respond really well to pure yeah. when uh, i give you pure you're always my like, mind's main no i just yeah, i just i just me. drank the pure again too because it is the but i now that one is more of a natural one right and then the other these other ones are i don't know what you gave me yesterday was that there synthetic was, no there was nothing synthetic in there um but it, it did have a lot of stuff it had a lot of stuff in there uh, the Organifi Pure is much more subtle, and I yeah. think just generally speaking, you'll feel good. Most people will feel good. I feel it. great from that, but yeah. it is very Did the subtle. Did other one have GABA in it? No, this one didn't have GABA, okay. but do you not like GABA? Well, that's the one that makes me a little drowsy. It's supposed just, to. No, yeah. Yeah, okay. GABA is, is a, it, it will make, in fact, some people before they go to bed will take GABA. Well, yeah, that's in the mellow, right? GABA's yeah, yeah. in the mellow? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah. no, I, well, I don't know what it is, but this is, it's been pretty consistent now. No matter the brand. <laughs> I, love, I love how much you guys trust me, by the way. <laughs> I literally, literally, this is, like, this is no joke. I, they don't even see the bottle. I have the pills in my hand, and I go up to Adam, and, then, yeah. and I, I just do this. I hold it like this, and he knows. He opens his hand, <laughs> and he just drops it. Dude, Same thing I, didn't even, I didn't even remember taking them. Like, I just like went home and went about my business like usual. Yeah. Like, I, well, I, for, even I, forgot, I felt great. I forgot, too. It was that, and this will happen. Like, you know, when, and I'm sure you guys are the same way. Like, you have like an off day. You feel off. And you start to piece it together. Yeah, I start to yeah. kind of go back through my day, and I'm like, okay, could it be this? Could it be that? And you, I start teasing out all of the possibilities, right? And uh, that's when I recalled, like, oh, you know what? Sal gave me some fucking pills, man. <laughs> and again, it was a nootropic. And I know that I, I just don't tend to react very well to any of yeah, those. Yeah, remember back in the day when I had you guys try? So these, this was a natural one. I saw the ingredients and nothing in there was synthetic. But I did have you guys a long time ago try synthetic nootropics, which are actually they were, they're actually designed as... Yeah, as racetim or whatever? They're, yeah, racetim uh, class of chemicals, right? So paracetam was one of them. Anaracetam was another one. And these are actually uh, prescribed substances in, in other countries, but here you can buy them over the counter. And some people love them. Like if I take paracetam... Um, I will notice uh, I, I do get some benefit, but I do come come down with a crash. But you, none of you guys responded well. That was that you neuro, guys had like my. That was that neuro it. brand, yeah. right? Neuro, it was neuro something. It has the like the, the 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 molecule on the front cover of it, and it's black. Maybe, like, but yeah. I remember I gave yeah, it to no, you guys. I felt terrible. Yeah, you guys, all of you had like headaches and just felt yeah. shitty afterwards. And I was mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, this makes me feel kind of hyper. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah, everybody's different. Yeah, it is. It's very different, and, and it's uh, it, again when it comes to brain like function. 
there's nothing's going to do anything like like sleeping better or just being healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, that makes the biggest difference. Ketogenic diets for some people have a, a, a profound uh, benefit on Well, obviously function. lots of room for improvement yeah. for your brain, so I'm sure that's why. <laughs> no, yeah. no, I got the v, I got the V12. It's, yeah. Yeah, I'm naturally well, inspired. Well, there's something to these <laughs> mushrooms though, I'm going to be honest. Like that's why I keep bringing like so the lines mean I definitely feel an effect and and I think like it's it's it has more of a neurogenesis kind of effect, right? Like so long term like, you, you keep using it uh, because I'm guaranteed, I mean, as much head trauma as I've had, like in my career playing football and sports and whatnot, it's like, you know, I could use some, some repairing in there. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. yeah. You're doing pretty good though. <laughs> it's it's all say, starting to come back. You know, you know some gears are finally like turning. Dude, I'm like, wow, were, I haven't felt that in a while. You were definitely built for football. I'll tell you that much because what was it? The other day I was doing an interview and Doug will usually have me sit in your chair yeah. because he pulls the computer up and I'm on zoom. Right. <laughs> so I put on his headphones, dude. Yeah. And the freaking, the top of the headphones were like right here. Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. How I big is your dome, head, dude? dude? Uh, it's yeah. like stre- <laughs> stretched it's out It's a to cranium. The yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a whole solar system around this cranium. What was your uh, helmet size? Did you, have, did you have to get the uh, biggest yeah, one? Extra <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I just get the biggest one. You yeah. Know? And then, yeah, I couldn't even pump it up with air because there wasn't room. You had to so, let the air yeah. out real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, speaking of pumping, I there was an interesting study that came out, and I'd love to hear you guys' opinions. So this was a short-term study, right? So all- On, all on, on pumping, for real? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, well a, something with pumping. What right? a great so, transition. I know, isn't wow, it? Wow. It's just connected. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it works, it right? It's just there. <laughs> so they, they, took, they took, it was a short study, so 12 weeks, I think it was, or 10 weeks, and they compared pumping type reps to full range of motion type reps. So let me explain. So you guys have all seen, we've all seen the pro bodybuilder who's doing the you know, skull crushers or the curls or the laterals. And it almost looks like they're shortening their reps. They're keeping, and they say they're keeping tension. So it's like these short kind of pumping reps or like no full extension with the tricep exercise or whatever, uh, or squats even. You'll see them kind of come up and down and without ever really stopping or going to full extension or whatever. So they compared those kind of reps to full range of motion reps for a short period of time. The pumping reps actually caused greater hypertrophy actually cause more muscle growth. Well, sacroposmic hypertrophy because you're pumping fluid in there, so that yeah. makes sense. Well, so that's, I think that's part of it, but here's what they said, and this is very fascinating. So you know when you do occlusion training, how, so occlusion training, for people who don't know, you'll, you'll tie off a limb, so like I'll take like a knee wrap, I'll put it up here in my armpit, around my arm, and then I'll do some curls, and what it does is it prevents uh, venous outflow. It's called blood outflow. So the blood pumps into the muscle, but not much pumps out. And I get this waste buildup, and the pump is intense, and it's, it's really, really painful. And what it does is it, it because it starves the muscle fibers of oxygen, they're, they, it's like they're, you're simulating using heavy weight, and so you get more hypertrophy. Well, what they're saying is that these pumping reps, because they never really uh, allow the muscle to – could you pump the blood out? It's like short pumping reps. You keep pumping more in than you pump out, mm. and it's like occlusion training. And this is why some bodybuilders see value in that. Don't you remember us speculating on that a long time back when we introduced uh, occlusion training to our buddy Craig Caperso? And remember, he saw very little benefit from it. And what I said was, he already trains so close he to did this. Say that. Yeah, because he was our, he was Mister like. Superset, triset, no rest periods, yeah, yeah, yeah. pumping exercise. Like he trained like that all the time, mm-hmm. and I'm like, but it was it was amazing for all of us who do more traditional sets that have long rest periods in between. You you throw someone like that and you teach them occlusion training, huge benefits from him. somebody who always trains like that, bodybuilder style. I would imagine would see little to minimal benefits to occlusion training. Yes. Now here's the takeaway from it. The takeaway is not that's the way you should always train because no. if they did a long term study. And they compared someone who utilized a little bit of both, you would see that the person utilizing both would get better results. Yeah. Not to mention not to mention the dysfunction that's yes. gonna create. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah, which is where I look. But yeah, of course there's value to it. If you're gonna feel your muscle continuously contracting and you know, a muscle endurance kind of component there as well. Uh, you know, I, 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 I could see how that you'd see some value in that and how it would promote muscle hypertrophy. But yeah, I, I'm always like cognizant of, well, okay, if I'm not going full range of motion, now I'm like programming my body to, to limit myself in that uh, range. Oh, yeah. It's funny because uh, we, we in, in the past, we've shot, uh, you know, like models to, to for our programs. So the models will come in and they'll demonstrate the exercise. So if you ever enroll in a MAPS program, you go on, you type in the exercise, you look up the exercise, and there's somebody demonstrating it. And we've had 
like bodybuilder or bodybuilder types come in and, yeah. and demonstrate. And Justin, I remember you were tripping out because one of the models couldn't do a full extension overhead. They were yeah. very muscular and fit, yeah. but they never trained with that full extension. And that's the thing. It's just, you, you know, you, you set those limitations because of the way the patterns that you, um, you know, you know, you keep uh, applying constantly. And, and so, yeah, it was, it was tough. It, and I've had this situation with, with multiple models that looked the part, but you know, the function side of it wasn't as much of the priority. Yeah, You don't use it, you lose it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they're not training full range of motion, they're going to lose <clears throat> the, the body will prune it off. It's not okay. We're never going to go that far down or pull our shoulders above behind our head like your body will just say it's not necessary so that was yeah. me so i my overhead presses i would stop just short of lockout to keep tension on the butt and the shoulders and get the pump and all that stuff and then when we all started working together you know justin was a huge advocate of overhead carries now when you're doing an overhead carry you pack the shoulder and you straighten the arm out and you want like a full extension and good tension and my shoulders grew from that because it was something that i never had trained before, mm -hmm. um, which brings me to another study on fitness. They compared lifting tempos, and they actually did. This is a great study. They had people do, train one leg on a leg extension with a like a, a fast lifting tempo, and the other leg with a slow lifting tempo. Oh, interesting! And they found no difference in hypertrophy at the end of this particular study. Same rep range, I'm assuming. It's, it's, the, the the weight was similar. They both went to failure, but there was no difference between the two. So at, at the end of the study, they conclude rep ranges don't matter. Again, here's the problem with that. These studies are short term. You take someone that always trains at a faster tempo and slow them down and they'll see some results and vice versa. That's where the value comes in all this variety is more in changing up what you're doing, adding variety, adding some novelty, and the body then responds again. Uh, but if it's 12 weeks, yeah, only in 12 weeks. I would weeks want to know more difference. about that study and the controls because if you got somebody who's slowing down the, the tempo dramatically compared to somebody who's got a faster tempo, the load that you can do is is completely different. Mm. Like if you're working at, let's say, 80% capacity or whatever that, and you're on, on legs and you have the faster tempo, you will not be able to do that same load on slow and control with a four, like a four, two, two tempo. Well, here's what, it's, here's what it says. It said one leg performed leg extension with a one, one concentric eccentric tempo. Okay. And the other leg performed the same program with the same loads, rest periods, et cetera, with a three, three tempo, both legs trained to failure resulting in the faster tempo performing double the number of reps. So you're right, they did more reps with the fast tempo than the slow tempo. But it was the same load and they both went to failure. Well, so okay, but the, they saw no yeah, difference. Yeah, but there you go right there. The you, you did double the reps. So of course that the 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 one so that, that makes up the difference. Yes. Hmm. So if they stopped at 15, okay, cuz that's why that there's there's holes in this study for sure. If both groups stopped at 15 reps, one did it fast to 15 reps, one did it slow and controlled like a 422, hmm. the one that did it slow and controlled would outperform for sure. The results would outperform. That's a great point. You just did double the reps to get the same yes, results. Yes. Of right? course. Right, and right, no right. and nobody's and well, not nobody. Very few people are doing 30 reps. Hmm. You know, so if you got to do 30 reps to get what someone gets out of 15 reps slow and controlled and, you know, pick any rep range, then that does, nobody's doing double that. Yeah, I, yeah, that yeah. doesn't make, that's a, that's a bad example to prove that point that rep ranges don't, don't matter. You mean, uh, uh, yeah, you mean uh, tempo. I, but again, at the end of the day, oh, yeah, me, what tempo. do you think would happen if you took someone who trained slow tempo and you sped it up? Well, yeah, or vice to, versa. And back to your exactly your original point is true. Also, I mean, I think there's holes in that study. And then in addition to that, you're right. You extend anything out beyond six months, and then then that throws everything yeah. out. Because this is where academia and mm -hmm. these studies mixes people up. Yeah. You know, because they're like, oh, I don't know if I should do that rep range. The, re the study says that this rep range is the best in a 12 week study. Yeah, people hold on to these numbers like crazy. <clears throat> and it's just like, it, you got to consider all the individual variances and everything else and like how they've been training before going into this and like, you know, how long, uh, you know, they've been doing it. It's just like, it, you know, you could, you could speculate all day. Or, or they hear that study and then they just neglect to ever even pay attention to tempo. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't, no, it doesn't matter. matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, I read this study. It's proved that it doesn't matter. There's no no difference between so why even bother? Yeah, yeah. what terrible yeah, advice! I know. Terrible yeah, yeah, advice. Yeah. And, and and to be honest, most people don't do a three three tempo. Mm -hmm. And so if you put most people on a slow, that's what, that was one of my my tricks in my bag as a trainer. If I had an experienced client, if I had a client been working out for a while, one of the first easiest things I could do to get their body to respond is slow their reps down. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take four seconds on the way down. Me too. We're going to pause and squeeze here and change nothing else, and then boom. I've said start. this on this show many times before. Like, I mean, they, so all this, all this study, going back to studies, show that the you know for hypertrophy, the four two two uh, tempo is what's what's ideal. 
And then I, I would ch- challenge anybody listening right now, next time you're in the gym, okay, if your place is open, look around and count somebody's negative. Mm-hmm. Tell me you see somebody who does a true four-second negative. Nobody does. You never see that. No. Yeah. And yet the, the studies prove that that's supposed to be one of the best places for hypertrophy, yet nobody does it. One of my favorite things to do is just I would just stick to counting that, like make them at least four to five seconds on a negative. Yeah, slowing yeah. down is great for preventing injury too because you're just less likely to get <clears throat> loose and stupid w- with your reps. Totally. Whereas when you go mm-hmm. fast, it's the – you know, it's the opposite. hundred percent agree. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, um, a little bit of alarming news. I'll let you guys know right now. Ooh. I just noticed, so you guys know, obviously can see that I have gray hair, right? And the head mm. and the head yeah. and the beard. You and me both. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Um, and, uh, I'm finding gray hairs other places now. Oh, yeah. what we talked about a long time ago. Well, I got a couple on my arm here and you can't see it on <laughs> camera, but there's two here. I found one on the chest. You have and, a few wizards. And, uh, okay. I got yeah. a wizard now. I got some yeah. wizards. Yeah. Too. That yeah, sucks, dude. Yeah. That's <laughs> weird. Wow. I don't think you could die any other Frosty. hair. Yeah. yeah. That's like, that's like you're, that's like, you, you, now you look old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you can die it though. Sort of the last. You can't do anything. You can die when, your chest hair. You can't do anything hair. when you lose it. When you lose it, it's it's. I got no options. Yeah, you look good. You got a nice round head, though. Luckily, it looks good. I know. Yeah, l- <laughs> luckily, it could be worse. It looks good on you. But yeah. if you have like like white arm hair, what do you do? You don't can't dye your do arm you get, hair. Does it does that eventually happen? You get white arm. Bro, hair? you get white you tubes. You get off, white dude. back hair. You get white every hair. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember seeing. I can't. I can't picture somebody with like white arm hair. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You haven't met like my dad or. They really? have, yeah, no, I'm. Oh, yeah, dude. White chest hair. You never seen that before? White chest hair, yeah, but arm hair, no. I got two right here. What the fuck's going yeah, on? Yeah, we're dude? just slowly turning it into buff looking Santas. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go in that direction. Bring, bring it back, dude. <laughs> oh, they need yeah. to bring it back. It used yeah. to be the style. Yeah. Guys used to make their shit white on purpose. Yeah, yeah. What the hell's going on here? <clears throat> hey, you sent uh, um, you sent a text message yesterday or this morning? Was it yesterday? Or this morning? Yeah, about taxes. Can you tell me what's being proposed right now? Oh, they're can just you, they're can... just saying that they're proposing the largest tax increase in thirty years. I mean, that they're right? putting together. That's the rumors right now. So, and I can't think of a better time to do this. I mean, we I just know. came out of a pandemic. We're inflating the currency like crazy, you know. Uh, Here's money, but also we're going to cut all of this part of it away. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, cool. I mean, did did not anybody? I mean, that was obvious, right? That was going to happen. You, if we pump that much money into the economy, it's not tied to anything. Then the you have to tax the shit out of everybody to cover that, right? I mean, I guess. Is that? I mean, what I mean, else is? What's the other option? Print. Which is what tend to what they tend to do, but mm-hmm. uh, but they're 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 talking about raising corporate tax rate. Raising the tax rate on people who make over like X amount of dollars. They're going to increase the tax for LLCs, uh, the capital gains tax. They're talking about raising that uh, mm. quite a bit. Wow. So basically, again, across the board, yeah, taxes are going to be crazy. With are, 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 How yeah, affected yeah. will Justin be with his uh, OnlyFans page? Mm. I mean, that, the, they can't touch that. Man. They can't take cash. That's Bitcoin. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. They have Justin's no idea. Justin's doing nudes for, nudes for Bitcoin, huh? <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Cakes and weights. <laughs> Get with the times, you guys. <laughs> Look okay. him up, Justin. Cakes and weights. That's right. He <laughs> takes Ripple. <laughs> <laughs> Ripple. Just crushed him. Find on. me on DuckDuckGo. <laughs> cru- yeah. Have you used DuckDuckGo? What's the deal with I, that? I, you know, I've, I tried to start using that. It's interesting because uh, everybody uses Google, obviously, but it's I didn't even know there's another option. Yeah, so I started using that, and it's it's interesting because you could totally see that uh, a lot of a lot of like certain pages are don't don't show up on Google that show up there, which is like kind of a fun thing to do. Like in terms of just if you're looking for a specific thing in the news or any status updates, you know, from coronavirus or anything, it's like a totally different like perspective. Who owns DuckDuckGo? That's a good question. Yeah, let's find out. Who Have you used it, Sal? I one time. I, uh, Justin told me to try it and I did one time and I haven't really played with it. What about you, Doug? I have used it. You have not, not regularly. No. Now, do you see any benefit? I like uh, school me on what the benefit should be. I mean, is it just? Uh, I think it's the Go- search engine, just like Google. Yeah, is. but Google is uh, highly. Uh, what's the word I want to use? Filtered, edited, or filtered. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like for example, I used to be able to look up uh, like information on bodybuilding, and forums would pop up, and I used to love to read forums. They don't pop up anymore. Now you get like official, like, you know, medical websites and stuff if you want to know about steroids. Steroids or hormones yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so they've, they're, so they're playing daddy. They were like, oh, no, we should probably look at this instead. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I wanted to look at other options that were out there. Yeah. So who owns them? Let's see. DuckDuckGo. Uh, they own themselves. Yeah, created by Gabriel Weinberg. Uh, is, it, is it an American company? 
Uh, it's based in Pennsylvania. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Good. I was like, yeah, I don't know a lot of history. It was like a Russian or Chinese company. I was like, yeah. Oh, they got us again. <laughs> mm. Got us again. Totally different perspective. Yeah. When when did that when did that roll out? Do we know when it rolled out? Mm, so I've seen the billboards. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It says 2018, but I don't know if that's the founding date. Yeah, interesting. I'll, yeah, I'll, it's just something new to check out. Do you mm. think something like this will survive, or do you think that it'll just get crushed by Google still? Well, I mean, Google dominates yeah. already. So, but I do think that this is just an alternative, right? Alternatives mm-hmm. are always going to exist as long as there's law. There aren't any laws. I think it's just it. good. Yeah, it's good to have other options out there. You know, if 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 you're trying to search for very specific things, that, especially news driven things, I've just have I've, I've I've had such like a disheartening experience, especially the last few years with uh, just trying to find out what's true and what's not true. You know, so it's, I need more perspectives. Yeah, I now, know how many how many search engines are there like this? I mean, isn't there like a, isn't Firefox and Safari and all those considered the same thing, or is that different? No, I don't think those are search engines. They're like not. Bing is a search engine. That's a Microsoft one. Mm. So what then? What is Firefox? Fox and Safari. I know there's a those bunch are of, browsers. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So a bunch of nerds out there laughing at me right now. Like they have no I don't, idea. Uh, <laughs> you know, Sal didn't have an answer. Using Firefox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Such a, a simpleton. What a dork. Yeah. Uh, no, you know, uh, a lot of countries will will kind of dictate what their people can and can't see. For example, mm-hmm. uh, if you're in China and you look up what was that Tiananmen Square, you, you won't find any information on what happened in Tiananmen Square. And was it 1989 when that happened, Doug? Was that right. 1989 when that happened? It was in the 80s. It was. You the, might it was, be right. It was like a big pro. If you guys seen, you guys have seen the video where the the, mm-hmm. the the businessman is standing in front of the tank, and he won't let the tank pass him. Yeah. There was like a big like crackdown from the government. Right. If you can't even look it up, if you look it up in China, you'll get no information on that yeah. whatsoever. I and, heard too, like uh, with the high speed rail, like with the train, like uh, there was some big accident that was just like covered up uh, forever, and then it took. A lot of people investigating to finally come out with it, like all these people that died. Yeah, from it just that. never happened. Yeah, it just never happened. Just whoosh. is so there not, any, so you look at that and you're like, hmm. Is there a lot of places besides China that are like that, or is just China like that? Uh, it's China's it's, notorious. For that. Yeah, they're, I mean they're easy to see, but I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in a lot of different places. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I mean, okay. Uh, is does does Google get told what they can and can't do by the government? I think so. I think there's definitely people who tell well, them. China kicked out uh, Facebook, right? So, yeah, Facebook isn't yeah there. banned from there. I mean, it's I mean North Korea obviously doesn't have any. Oh my god, you know information about like uh, anything. Like the, those poor people don't have any access. That's so. a whole nother yeah, ball game. a whole nother thing. Yes. But yeah, so there's parts of the world that aren't getting basically anything. Yeah. Dude, speaking of other countries, uh, this is sad. You know, Italy. Is going to go into lockdown again. I heard you say that. Is that true? Wow. Yeah, they're they're talking about because I guess their coronavirus numbers are spiking again. You know, here's a deal. I'm going to just say this. Okay, this is because this is my my the culture of my my parents. It, Italy is very ill suited for pandemics because they kiss and hug and fucking talk and spit all over the place. This is part of their culture. <laughs> so you're telling these people who love to touch and hug and kiss, don't do any of that. And then, you know, it's so hard. It's a part of who they are. So it's just their their cases are just going up. So they're doing the lockdown again. Would they be considered like one of the most social cultures? Yeah, all those all those 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 types of cultures. Mediterranean cultures are like that. I mean, mm-hmm. Italians are very touchy feely, very, you know, if you meet someone you haven't met before, uh, you kiss them. Um, you know, men kiss each other all the time. It, women, you know, it's just you, that's how you greet your parents. Or your grandparents, or whatever. So it's just a very physical um, culture, and so it's just not great for viruses. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's just not good. So they're going to go on lockdown oh, again, which man, is really that's sad. Such a bummer. Because yeah. they've had already two really big ones. And is that lockdown. is that full lockdown or what? Yeah, they're looking to go hard, especially before Easter. That's a big holiday over there. Mm. So they're looking to shut it down. And mm-hmm. I don't know, man, how that's going to work out. So I got another message that saying because we went back and forth on the percentage of people. Gyms are ten. So I, I had a client, and I thought oh, we looked at, yeah, I thought it was twenty five. Then I heard ten again, mm-hmm. and restaurants are fifty percent or twenty five percent. I think twenty five indoors. That's what it is. I think so here, but they mm-hmm. do all the outdoor stuff. That's, yeah, but our cases here in California are, are have dropped considerably. Yeah, like rapidly. Yeah, they're really really low here right now, and so we'll see we'll see what happens. A lot of people are getting vaccinated. Although, did you hear about these European countries that are? Uh, stopping the administration of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Mm-mm. Norway, uh, I forgot what other countries, like three or four European countries, 
stopped because there were cases of people having strokes wow. later on. But they're, they, they're still not making, they're still not 100% with the connection, but they're just to be safe, they're stopping it. Mm-hmm. And apparently these strokes were weird. Like people 48 hours later were getting like a, like a not just a stroke, but a blood clot in their oh, leg wow. or somewhere else. So they're stopping it right now just to see what would happen. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I don't know, man. That's scary. Yeah, yeah. See, but that's the kind of stuff like you want to find out. Like, you, you don't, I don't know. That's why I wasn't going on DuckDuckGo because, like, like vaccine stuff. I want to know the differences between, you know, each one of them. Like, what kind of cases where people have actually had adverse re- effects from it, you know, right away. It's just, it just doesn't feel like that's something that they're trying to shield a lot of that on Google, it, it seems like. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So here's, here's something that's interesting. I was having a conversation with Jessica about uh, life expectancies and we were we were we were having conversations she's obviously traveled the world when she used to work for uh, Cirque du Soleil she's been to I don't know how many countries a million countries and we were talking about the prevalence of smoking in other countries how, how different it is than here like here especially in California you don't see people smoking cigarettes too often in fact it's actually quite rare that yeah, you see someone not anymore at least yeah yeah smoking cigarettes but when you go to a country like like Italy or Russia, for example, um, people just smoke like crazy. Yeah. And yet some of these countries have higher life expectancies. In Italy, they live longer than they do here. In in parts of uh, Asia, they, they smoke like crazy, but they live longer than, than we do here. And it just goes to highlight just how, how bad smoking is. Obesity is, is worse. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what kills us. It's not smoking that. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think that's the that's the answer. It's not yes. that smoking isn't that bad. Yeah, just not, not like it's some hermetic effect. You know, no, that no. smoking is providing. You know, no, it's like that. Just obesity is worse. It's worse. Yeah, you know, isn't that crazy? Well, and they went back on that. Didn't they have just some study too that like was definitively attributing a lot of obesity being like a, a, a problematic. Uh, for when you have like Corona, like it, it will, it will like oh, yeah. enhance the, yeah, the symptoms. Oh, your, your death rate goes up right. considerably. Now obesity by itself, uh, is it, it causes, can cause worse health for you. Now, that doesn't mean you can be healthier and overweight than you would be if, you know, if you were overweight and not healthy. In other words, maybe you do try to eat right. Maybe you do try to exercise and stuff, but you're just overweight. Mm-hmm. You're, you're better off than if you don't do those things. But just having lots of excess body fat on your body does cause problems. Ba- body fat is not it's, – it's a hormone-sensitive tissue. By itself, when you have a lot of it, increases inflammatory markers. Regardless of what you do, obesity by itself uh, is, you, causes problems. Have you guys followed any charts on that, like where we're at now, after, especially after the, the lockdown last year? Like how are we worse now than we were just you last year? You mean with year? obesity? Yeah. I mean, oh, I would imagine question. that we I are. haven't looked at a chart like that in a while. I mean, the last time I looked, it was probably at least a year or more ago, and just, it, we were obviously still on the rise. Inter- it would be interesting to see what this last year is. Yeah, that's a great question. Hmm. I know there, there's one artist that's kind of sad, but uh, childhood, this is really sad, childhood suicides – uh, have gone up considerably um, in a lot of countries, and they're contributing. They're saying that it's the lockdowns that contributed mm-hmm. to that. This, this isolation that these kids felt, which is oh, really yeah. really sad. Yeah, that that depresses me. I mean, that's just one of those things, like the the mental side of of the ramifications of what we're going to see, you know, going forward. You know, especially in the kids, uh, you know, from being away from their friends and social interactions and everything took a ma- massive toll on, on these kids. Yeah, now, totally. do you guys, do you guys see some of the positive things? So I feel like mental health is, is a, a, a bigger conversation than it's ever been. So it's not like we're just kind of brushing. You know, I way. agree with you. I think people realize just how important it is to be around other people. Yeah. I think more people yeah. realize that never for than ever yeah. because it was taken away from them. Mm-hmm. And then you, you, you really feel the contrast. And so now I'm hoping people are like, okay, I'm going to make more of an effort because I was okay. So Arthur Brooks has a great podcast and he did an episode where he, I forgot who he interviewed, but they were talking about loneliness. Um, and Jessica's a huge fan. She listens to every episode. She'll still send me uh, clips all the time. And loneliness is, is exploded even though, we are supposedly more connected, right? We see each other on social media, we text each other or whatever, but loneliness across all age categories has gone up significantly um, and the lockdowns have made it uh, much worse. Yeah, iGen yeah. talked about that. So we were already on that path before that. Did you see, Doug just pulled up the, the percentage right there. We have now passed 40%, 42.4% uh, is is considered obese? Wow! Wow! Check this out. The national That's crazy. The national adult obesity rate from 2008. Okay, that wasn't even that long ago. From 2008 to now, has gone up 26 percent. Yeah, bro. 
almost that's half, insane. Almost half is obese. Yeah, not overweight. Obese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Because the market, the market, it, it, it serves the consumer, right? So we know that uh, chairs are getting bigger, and they're offering more, you know, headroom in, in certain cars and. Clothes in America are bigger. For example, you get a large shirt here versus a large in another country, and they just they're not the same. They're way bigger here. Yeah. What's it gonna look like when they make up a majority, right? When it's sixty percent, when forty percent of Americans are not obese. Well, at this aren't. at this rate, look at you just said I twenty know. it's gone up twenty six twenty six points since we'll get there before we know it. Yeah, in 08, that means in five or ten years we're at that rate. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's gonna be interesting to see what that kind of looks like, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Meanwhile, I just keep hearing stay away and mask up. And that's, you know, the only sort of protocol that the general public is receiving. Yeah. What's really sad is that they they closed uh, when everything was really bad. They closed parks, outdoor parks and trails. No. I couldn't believe that. No, we got to promote activity. Yeah. You know, we got to get out there. We got to get gyms up and we got to get people moving and and. and promoting healthy practices on, on the positive note though people are though like so like if you go to like rei right i don't know if any of you more been, people right oh That's dude right. everything's sold out you can't buy hiking boots you can't yeah, get a kayak right. you can't get a canoe you can't get, can't get by, i couldn't get a bike yeah, you know, to save my life yeah like the last year yeah. or two yeah so i mean people are people are going out and doing that regardless of what you know they're saying as far as you can't do this you can't do that people are finding ways i mean that's how important i mean i think on a positive note, I think we have become more aware. Talk about the mental health point. I think even more people are aware of the obesity rate where it's going. So, you know, I want to believe that uh, we're we're you know heading in the right direction, or we're going to yeah. be heading in the right direction. Yeah, I would just love it if it was promoted more. I guess is, is the point. You know. Yeah, yeah, and not talked against. There's not yeah, money in it. To... There's not money in it. Yeah. There's more. There's more money into what your point was. I told. I shared you guys that story a long time ago. That one of my favorite clients, brilliant, brilliant woman that I used to train, and she used to shit on all my business ideas because all my <laughs> because all my this business client yeah, yeah i loved her it gets though. messy like i want i wanted that i wanted someone to, to be honest with me I, you know here's my plan this is what i think is a, a brilliant idea and, and all my you know quote unquote brilliant ideas were you know forward thinking fitness stuff oh yeah and she's like you're you're going the wrong direction she goes you know obesity is on the rise people are getting bigger and bigger and she's like there's way more money in you catering to that demographic of people than there is trying to hope that the future is more and more people get in, do your you know your balance you know it's almost regressing back to like the, the very basic essentials yeah well, yeah. well she, she, you know she said she goes, she goes uh you know huge money in oversized spatulas yeah, yeah. over oversized doorknobs oh, yes oversized like <laughs> big spoons oh, wow. yes she's like there's 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 lots does of does your money. spoon not put food in your face fast enough yeah key, <laughs> keypads keypads and phones and claw like there's Things that with someone that has massive fingers and hands just have a heart. The, the things that we take for granted, you know, that you grab every day and use because you can do that. You just don't. And she, and she would totally shit on my idea. And I was like, oh, my God. Didn't you come up with a chair? Yeah. Like so a we, super expensive chair. Yeah, I, I mean, I wasn't the inventor. I was I was part of the team that was going to help promote it and sell it. And uh, it was a uh, it was basically an office chair that the axle Sat, the shaft actually we had an engineer design it to where it was on this like a ball inside the shaft so there was a 15 degree play all the way around so there was you insert some drawings right there so so there's <laughs> that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so keep so doing that with your it, yeah so it was it, it was instable right F yeah. 15 degree play all the way so mm -hmm. basically the idea the concept was that someone would sit at their desk and they would have to activate their core all day long and we mm -hmm. had the we had the research on how many more calories you would burn throughout the day how much better it was for your posture and how bad sitting at like a, a, a normal stationary desk was we also had the uh instead of it being flat that it was the chair was slightly tilted down so you'd have to maintain yeah so you wouldn't so it wouldn't shorten up the hip flexors all the way so it was a brilliant idea problem was Office, ten thousand dollars. Well, yeah, <laughs> office chairs are already expensive as it is three hundred, six hundred plus dollars for your state, your basic office chair. This thing would cost north of of that, mm -hmm. and people are those. That's a cost that most places are trying to reduce. In addition to that, you get the same benefits if you st sat on a stability ball. Mm. So yeah, it I was, can see. Yeah. So yeah. all right. Speaking of uh, of game changers, uh, you guys still using Element? Yeah, I use it this morning. Yeah. yeah. So what do you guys what do you guys think? I like it's it's funny that. Just a bunch of sodium makes me feel good. <laughs> Isn't it crazy? Yeah. It's so what I do, especially if my carbs are low, if yeah. my carbs are, so I do, over the weekend, I drop my carbs considerably. 
and I had I would have three a day. I'd have one first thing in the morning, and I, and I felt almost you know when you go drop your carbs real low, especially the first day or two, mm-hmm. you feel a little bit maybe weak or lightheaded. None of that. I felt totally fine the whole day. Yeah. And then for the as far as the workouts gets, are concerned, um, it's better than <laughs> drinking carbs or anything else. Well, you know what it's re- yeah. it's replaced for me is when I start to feel kind of tired like that and sluggish, I actually go to that first before I reach for caffeine now. Mm. In the past, that's like go-to. Like, oh, I feel a little sluggish. Let me go get the nitro brew or let me have a rock star or let me get a pre-workout. Instead, I'll actually do that first and see how I feel. And many times, just doing that alone- Wakes you up. Yes. Gives you energy, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. You don't even feel like- I didn't even know I felt like deficient. Like, you, like uh, especially when I'm low calorie and I'm trying to kind of go more in a deficit- it's it's something that I just introduced more of that sodium blend, and it's like, dude, immediate energy boost. Yeah, isn't that wild? Yeah, it's wild. So you want to hear something crazy? So they have this is a this is an invention that's uh, that's coming out. So engineers at the University of California, San Diego, have developed a soft, stretchy skin patch. So this is something you put on your arm that can be worn on the neck. Sorry, it's on the neck to continuously track blood pressure and heart rate while measuring the wearer's levels of glucose as well as lactate, alcohol, or caffeine. What? So it's a skin patch you put on, and it'll constantly measure Does all of those things. have something like so sticking inside you? It has to if it's a yeah. glu- glucose, glucose monitor, right? Yeah. Um, Continue glucose monitor? I don't know. I don't know. But it says it's just a soft skin patch. It's really interesting. Hmm. They're saying that including they would use this on, on infants in the, in the, in the NICU. Yeah. which is kind of cool. So there's different sensors and merge them together on a single small platform as small as a stamp. It says that we can collect so much information with this one wearable and do so in a non-invasive way. No, there's no needles. Hmm. Non-invasive way without causing... Dis- that? I have no idea. But think, look at all those things you can measure. Alcohol, yeah. lactate, that's like athletes if you're just training your ass off and getting lactate to, to go up. Caffeine, see where your caffeine level's up. Glucose. Heart rate, blood pressure on a skin patch? Just Connect from that adhering to, a- to your skin? Yeah. I don't understand how that works. Now, is, is it going to be like the glucose monitor where you have to have a prescription to get it? Or is this something that over-the-counter people will Well, so with? here's the deal. It, because it's not in, in, in putting something in your body, like because the, the, the current ones have little tiny needles, right? Yeah. I think that's why it has to be prescription. If it didn't have those, you could buy them. You would be able to buy it without a prescription. Anything you have to inject into your body, mm-hmm. you can't get uh, over the counter. Oh yeah, that's been the barrier for a long time. We got excited about the continual uh, glucose monitors, and I was like, man, it's gonna be so game changer for our industry, and people are gonna know specifically, you know, their individual ba- variances and things, and uh, and how like different foods affect them, which I still think is like, that's sort of the, the next level. That's where everybody's going to level up when you get that kind of information that's very specifically to you, uh, which another one that I thought was interesting was like motion capture, uh, you know, type of uh, technology with using sensors. So they've been messing around with these for a long time uh, at, at different like, you know, high-end training facilities that are more sports-specific focused. Uh, but, you know, as you're wearing like just uh, they've been trying to develop clothes for this too. I think Under Armour and some yeah. other companies have been trying to kind of like uh, sneakily kind of weave these into their clothes. So that way you, you have sort of these sensors embedded in, in your clothing. So it actually like, you know, throughout the day can measure your gait and, and measure like different ways that uh, different uh, amounts of force that you're producing and different movements. And uh, so as a coach, you can kind of see patterns and be able to analyze and, wow. and, and and cue very subtle things that will make, you know, massive differences. That you can't see with your eyes, right? No, you can't see. That's well, rad. Because yeah. the, 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 that is cool. The key with all the stuff is real time, right? So <laughs> right. while you're eating, while you're working out, while you're doing whatever, it tells you your glucose or tells you your and, movement. And it's like how you, you move for everything. It's not just like what you're doing. You know how you can perform in a workout and you like you show up and like I can be very like um, – you know, I, I can manage myself and be more, uh, you know, focused and, and, and make sure like my body's doing what I'm controlling and telling it to do versus like what I do continuously. Like I don't realize like how I'm moving and picking things up throughout the day and all of this data will end up, you know, coming to, to the forefront and showing you like, this is what you really do. Oh, I, f- cool. I feel like our buddy, uh, Paul Fabritz over at PJ performance. I think he's done that right. Where he's, where he's shown that with someone going up for like a vertical jump and they, they, they do that. Oh, I'm sure. They use the they use like uh, the similar uh, to what like video games do, where they put the little balls. Oh, on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they can look at they can actually look at his gait 
weight going into the jump right. and, and show like, oh, look, you're not you're not bending enough at the knee right here or you're rotating too much here and mm -hmm. they can make those those. But I always thought this would be I mean, this is a, a thing that could be subtle, like it could be in your yeah. shoes, like it could be, uh, you know, in your clothes. So like any any average person or like somebody like maybe interested in improving their overall performance, like they would just have access to this data and go through and then eventually get sophisticated enough where we'll simplify it and just be like, okay, you know, you tend to do this, like try this instead and it'll just be very prescriptive. So I always wonder though, how things like that are going to be with the average person, right? It's like our good buddy Craig who developed an app that I remember we sat down where it was like, okay, cool, but yeah, not going to work. Super complicated. Yes. Too much work for the average person. Yeah, like, I, I could see this being used uh, by high like, level athletes. Yes, like elite yeah. athletes. Well, that's where it's always going to start. Hundred percent that that at that level because that person is looking for every you know half a percent you know advantage they can gain and they'll they're willing to do whatever it takes to well, fix so, that. So the patch that I'm talking about that I talked about, I could see some applications with average people, especially when it's measuring glucose because. There's some interesting things that happen from individual to individual when it comes to glucose. Yeah, you could eat a chocolate chip cookie for one person and get no spike no versus spike. Someone, and yeah. you get an avocado yeah. spike that person. Which and, is very strange. And vice versa for somebody Yeah, else. very, very interesting, right? But it's in real time. So yeah. you're, you're eating. And then imagine attaching it to an app that tells you, that starts to construct your individualized diet. Hey, listen, these fruits for you don't seem to react really well. Well, isn't your, the buddy that I, I introduced you to, right, or that Everett introduced you to that you were talking to that was developing this, they were going to take it to even a further level that – it would. They had restaurants on their list, and then like certain menus that would be ideal. This would work for you. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I would. Oh, imagine that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has to be that simple for right. a client. It can't be too much information for them. The information. Well, I mean, with AI and everything now advancing, I think that it will take all the work, uh, you know, take and aggregate all the data and be able to just present like one or two simple things like, okay, do this now. Like when you go choose food, like try and go in this direction and just like simplify it all. Hey, thanks for listening to our podcast. Real quick, before we get to the questions, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides. Lots of free information that'll teach you how to build better arms, legs, get a better squat, get a tighter midsection. Lots and lots of guides. We wrote them ourselves. Again, mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, our first question is from Corinne from Pennsylvania. Hey, Corinne, how can we help you? Hey, you guys. First of all, thank you so much for all you do. I really appreciate all the content you produce. And Sal, I am so excited for your book. I cannot wait for it to come out. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so my question is um, specifically relating to when I deadlift and do barbell rows. Uh, well, I have been lifting consistently for about four and a half years, but I've been noticing more and more as I've been developing kind of more capability with these movements, I, I feel the lift in a different place on my right lat and my left lat. And I basically am just not sure if there's any sort of priming movement I can do, if there's any mental cue that I might be missing when I approach these movements that's kind of inhibiting my ability to, um, to, kind of, to I guess, finish the lift correctly. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and it's actually quite common, especially when people st first start to develop muscle. They'll say things like, I feel it more on my right side of my chest than my left, or more on my right shoulder than my left. Um, without watching your form and watching you work out, because that would help me really diagnose more specifically what's going on, really a good rule of thumb in a case like this is to go lighter, to slow down, and to focus on the squeeze, mm -hmm. right? So Let's say you're doing a barbell row and you're, you, you, like you said, you're feeling it more on one side or the other or it just feels different. I would take the weight and I'd cut it in half, uh, literally. Go down you know, 50%, so it's much, much lighter. And then slow down the rep. And then when you get to the part where you're squeezing, where the barbell is near your midsection, hold the barbell there and then squeeze your back and your lats as hard as you can and try as hard as you can to feel the exercise where you want to feel it. It's going to take a little bit of practice. But in my experience, this general advice tends to work for most people. So, Corinne, are you on Facebook? Corinne? Hello? Yes. Right. Hello. Sorry. So, <laughs> yes, I am on Facebook. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have Doug give you access to our private forum. This is one of the things that we do quite a bit inside this forum is – people will post videos of them doing exercises that are trying to troubleshoot this exact thing. So before I start trying to take guesses at what might be going on here, uh, it would help out a, a tremendous amount if you were 
if you posted a video of you actually rowing or deadlifting, because I'm going to, I'm going to look, I'm going to start at the floor and work all the way up and, and, and see if I see any sort of discrepancy. And sometimes somebody is just slightly pronating on, uh, on one of their feet. So it's their, their feet are just barely collapsing in the, a tiny bit and it's running its way up the kinetic chain and they're feeling it on one side more than the other, their back. And they don't even realize it because they're looking up, you know, from the hips up, they're not even paying attention to their feet because it's a back exercise and most people don't make that connection. So I would love to see a video so I could kind of look and see how you're moving. And then there's other common things where, you know, we, if you're right-handed and you, you write with your right, you drive your right, do everything with your right hand. A lot of times clients will, their right side, their shoulder will be rolled a little more forward than their left side. And so then when they go to do an exercise, like a bent over row, that right side that's protracted forward a little bit more doesn't quite get the same engagement and squeeze on the lat on the right side as the left side does. So it could be a lot of different things like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're already – that fact that you're aware of it, I mean, that's huge. Uh, the next step, I'd say, is to, is to get another pair of eyes on it that, that are looking from the outside. Yeah, to kind of piggyback on both uh, the guys, what they've kind of contributed. I, I also think, like – Spending a lot of time in unilateral training helps uh, in going slow and and feeling your way through that and going for the squeeze. But anytime there's a discrepancy uh, and I feel one side overpowering the other, um, I tend to just you know put a halt to uh, you know any kind of by loading situation and go back to unilateral and, and really try to regain that stability and support. Yeah, you know it's a good exercise for instead of the barbell row, um, you could try a one arm cable row, either standing or seated. And like I said earlier, go light, slow, and really focus on the squeeze. Typically, if you can, in that shortened position, in that squeeze position, if you could feel the muscle in the squeeze position, then the rest of the repetition tends to follow suit. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I actually just started a mapped split not too long ago. And the one arm dumbbell row is something, uh, well, the alternating one is something I never tried before. So I am, I have been experiencing some, some benefits with that, but I'm curious to see if I'll see the carryover as I start to incorporate um, more of the, the two handed stuff. Excellent. For sure. Yeah, you definitely will. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Thank you. I love questions like that. I mean, the fact that, uh, you know, I think that's one of like the steps you try and get every client to, right? When they, they she's first paying attention, right? Exactly. She's already at, at a, a place where she's aware. Most clients are just completely yeah, they're just moving the bar. Yeah, completely mm -hmm. unaware. They see how you move and they just try and emulate it. They're not really paying attention to what muscles are supposed mm -hmm. to be working. So the fact that she's already aware of that there's some sort of a discrepancy there, and she's even had the awareness to probably video it or see, and she says the bar looks even. But again, until I see that video, it could be like I said, something mm -hmm. so so small in their feet that are run, that's running all the way up that's throwing that off. Yeah, totally. and it's uh, the strength of a barbell of barbell lifts is the fact that you can load uh, them so heavy, mm -hmm. and they're great for overall strength. Because of that, you tend to build a lot of muscle with them. But along with that comes a weakness, which is one side can definitely do more than the other. Dumbbells are excellent at evening mm -hmm. the body out, especially when you do one dumbbell exercise at a time. So rather than doing a two-arm dumbbell row, you do a one-arm dumbbell row, and then let the weaker side dictate the amount of weight that you use. This is why barbells and dumbbells complement each mm -hmm. other so well. Oh, yeah. It's just a healthy practice because, I mean, even when you feel balanced uh, and you're going through a lot of barbell training, eventually uh, one side is going to sort of take over the other. And so it's just a good practice to, to go back to uh, dumbbells and do some unilateral training. Our next caller is Bryce from Ohio. Hey, what's up, Bryce? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, first of all, love the podcast. Uh, you guys are definitely some of my favorite people to listen to and your information is just gold. So thank you guys for just putting that out there. Cool. Um, so, so my question revolves around hormones. So I, on a whim, a couple months ago, just took a testosterone test and it came back and my levels were extremely low. I, I believe they were like 200 nanograms per deciliter or something like that. And I'm a young guy, I'm 23. So um, obviously that's, you know, below the, the normal range for any male, let alone being so young. So, um, I've kind of tried to implement some things myself. Um, but I guess what, what should my training, uh, nutrition and really lifestyle look like in general to, to try and, you know, get those testosterone levels up, 
Uh, what should what should those things look like in the process of doing that? Okay. Um, well, first, let's talk about what you did. You said you did some stuff already to to try to work on it. Right. So I was I was very lean when I I've been very lean for about probably you know four years probably you know sub sub eight percent body fat. Um, so I think that definitely had an impact on my levels. And some of the things that I did were really just kind of gain some body fat, you know, make my body feel more safe. And um, so those things can start to auto-regulate. And I kind of reduced my exercise regimen a little bit, um, increased my calories. Like I said, gained a little bit of weight. Those have been the the two major things that I've done. Okay. And uh, have you been lifting weights? Yeah. What's the exercise training? What's your programming look like? What did it look like before? And what does it look like now? So, so before it kind of looked like a split routine, like a push pull legs. So hitting each body part, maybe twice a week or so. Um, and now it kind of looks something similar to, um, I guess maps anabolic style where I'm really only doing the, the compound lifts a few days a week. Um, so, okay. Um, now have you gotten retested? Have you seen if your testosterone levels have changed at all? Um, they have, they've gone up a little bit. Um, but I guess it's, it's kind of a a slow recovery. They tell me because, you know, I, I put my body in that state for such a long time. So it sounds like, I think they went up maybe a hundred points in the last. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that, I think it sounds like you're doing really good. Think about that's a 50% increase if you were at 200. So I, you're definitely on the right track. I mean, uh, I would have suggested a maps anabolic, programming for sure uh increasing calories like Mm -hmm. you said probably but you were right on with that probably addressing sleep making sure that i don't know what stress looks like in your life maybe looking at things like that but if you've already jumped 100 points already uh that's pretty damn good yeah i would look at vitamin d levels if you haven't already um and you could try eating more dietary cholesterol in some cases that raises testosterone but here's the deal with the number that you gave you said 200 uh, your, your testosterone came back measuring at 200. That's, uh, that's pretty low. That's, that's lower than I would say. I think it's like half of men in their seventies will have testosterone higher than that. And if you, if you doubled it, let's say you doubled your testosterone, you would be at 400, which would still be considered low for your age. So the reason why I'm saying this is, be, is, is for the following low testosterone, um, in that, in that range under 300 has health risks associated with it. So your, your health risks, uh, increase for dementia, for cancer, heart disease, um, and other uh, types of issues. Um, so if you're if you're trying to raise it and you're doing everything you can, and let's say you double your testosterone, you're still relatively low. And you've, if you've been doing this for about six months, I would work with a hormone specialist. And there's a couple things you could do. The first thing that they might do is try to put you on a regimen that would raise your natural testosterone, kind of kickstart it. And it usually looks like HCG or HCG plus something called Clomid, which uh, is a a, a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Um, Have you talked to your doctor about any any of those options? Yeah, so treatment was something that, you know, I thought initially might be something that I would need to pursue, but my uh, testosterone, the hormone specialist would would not let me get on any sort of treatment since I'm under the age of 25. Okay. And do, really? they, do they have a time frame? Do they say, okay, try this for X amount of time before we'll start to pursue? Because I, I understand why. If you go on, well, the HCG and Clomid, that's something you would come off. But if you did go on testosterone, um, you're going to be on it forever. It's, it's very rare that you go on and can come, come back off. Have you been natural this whole time, if you don't mind me asking? Yes. Yeah. hundred okay. percent. Okay. And, and, and do they have a time frame? Did they say, okay, let's give this another six months? No, no, there was, there was no sort of time frame. They, they essentially just said that, you know, pay more attention to your diet and mm. see, you know, I, this, about it. this sounds like a general practitioner. Is that what it is? Is it you're just your regular doctor or did you go see an actual hormone therapist? Cause if you saw a hormone therapist, I can't imagine them telling you that they wouldn't. It, it was a uh, testosterone replacement therapist. Okay. So, wow. here, so here's the deal. Um, uh, okay. So here are the, the, the classic things that can raise testosterone in men and, uh, and they're quite effective, right? You could lift weights, MAPS anabolic style routine is, it would be perfect for that. 
You make sure you get good sleep. You manage your stress. Make sure that your diet is uh, adequate in both fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Um, make sure that you're not deficient in any nutrients like zinc or vitamin D, which can lower uh, testosterone levels. But then there's this, okay? If you do all that and your testosterone raises and it's at, I don't know, 350 or 400, and, you're so, and you also feel the effects of low testosterone, then uh, I would seek another hormone doctor because the low testosterone really uh, hammers your quality of life. Mm -hmm. It really does, especially at your age. It'll, it'll reduce your confidence, your drive. Um, it'll, obviously, of course, lower your libido. And you have health risks that are associated with low testosterone, which a lot of you know, men don't know. They don't know. They just think low testosterone means they feel crummy. But you actually increase your risk of, of long-term uh, disease. And this is becoming much more prevalent uh, these days. You're seeing more and more young men with low testosterone. So I, I would seek out another doctor. I would definitely continue down your path and see what happens um, and see if you can get it up to at least the five to 600. That's crazy range. to me that they're, they're telling him that. I mean, because it's because of his age. Yeah. But I, this is very similar position that I was at. Right. So I was all the way down in the 200s, uh, worked my ass off, the you know, for a couple of years of trying to do it naturally to bring it back up. The highest I got it was low for like 404 was the highest that I got it up to. And I still felt terrible. Mm. I didn't. I felt better than when I felt at 200, which I'm sure you're probably experiencing. Bryce, you probably feel a little bit better right now than what you did six months ago, but still didn't feel great. And eventually that's what I did was I went back on, I just, I mean, it's I'm on month two right now of my replacement therapy and feel amazing just because they've got my levels back up to normal, you know? So I'm, I'm now hovering in that, you know, my, I probably peak around 900 to a thousand. And then at the end of the week, I come back down to the 400 range, but just that alone has made a huge difference in my mood, my sleep, my libido, mm -hmm. like my energy and strength and consistency. So I obviously I'm older, so uh, they are probably less reluctant to probably give it to someone like me, but it's really strange yeah. to me that they're they're not they're not doing that now, for him that low. Now keep in mind, Bryce, we're, none of us are doctors. Okay, so we're just speaking from experience of working with clients and you know and having doctors as clients and friends. But I would look for you know I would recommend you look for another opinion. And I've had several clients who've had low testosterone who were young, uh, young men, um, both of which who were trying to also mm. conceive. And the doctor uh, did put them on HCG, and it was relatively successful. I had uh, one guy I trained; uh, he got his testosterone levels up to in the in the high 500s, for, and he was down. Uh, I think believe he was lower than 200 when he first started. So see if 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 some of these treatments are an option for you. Um, it's not permanent, right? The HCG protocol is, is not a permanent protocol. If you go on TRT, though, you're going to have to make peace with the fact that you're probably going to stay on it for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'm still tripping that uh, it was so low and you're so young. Uh, were, were you competing? Like, What was the motivation behind being so lean for that long? Essentially. So once I got to college, just about five years ago when, when it all started. So when I got to college, all my roommates loved to lift and everything. And Around that time when I started lifting, I also found out about like clean eating and all that stuff. So I mm. dropped my calories, you know, dramatically and, you know, mm. chicken breasts and egg whites, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought that was healthy. Right. And I did that until I thought that was the way to results, right. To get more muscle. So I continued on that path until essentially I had like barely any energy, you know, any muscle left on my body. Um, and I, I felt definitely all the effects, you know, of low testosterone, but in the moment I didn't know I was oblivious to them. So, uh, and Bryce, have you gotten your new, have you gotten nutrients like zinc and vitamin D tested to see if you're within range? Oh, yeah. I have not got those tested. Okay. I, I do take, you know, a multivitamin with, it's got some zinc in it. And then I also take vitamin D but I've never tested those numbers. Go, go get your nutrients tested. That makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. That can make a very, very big difference. And then do you use, uh, do you use marijuana or cannabis? Are, are you okay talking about that? No, I, I don't. At okay. The moment. Okay. In some, in some men, uh, marijuana use, uh, it's been speculated to lower testosterone as well, but I'd go get a nutrient test, make sure that you're not deficient in, in especially key nutrients like zinc and vitamin D, but others can actually affect testosterone as well. Continue doing what you're doing with your training and your diet and your sleep. And then I would look for another uh, hormone specialist um, to come up with a plan, you know, to say, okay, look, I'm going to try these things. 
at what point do I start to go the pharmaceutical route to try to get my testosterone levels up within range? Because, uh, like I said, it's a it's a dramatic reduction in quality of life, and you also it also comes along with health uh, complications or health risks. So it's not just about feeling crappy; it can actually have some long term health consequences. Okay, um, I don't I don't know if you guys have maybe this isn't the right question to ask you guys. Have you ever talked with people or experienced clients that you've had that? have been in this situation, how long it may take to, you know, naturally get yourself out of that state. Yeah. Getting your, with testosterone levels, raising them naturally, in my experience, a a, a great outcome is a 50% increase. The problem is if your number is at 200, a 50% increase brings you to 300, which is barely at the lowest end of Mm -hmm. the normal range. So I've, I've, I have had one guy double his testosterone, but he also had a nutrient deficiency. And nutrient deficiencies can cause some pretty interesting things to happen. So um, again, I'm, I, you know, we're not specialists in this field. We just have experience working with people who've done this. I would seek another professional and yeah. see if you can have some kind of a protocol. It's, it sounds like they kind of disregarded you, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All, All right. right. Thank you guys so no, much. I appreciate it. No Thank problem, you. guys. All right. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is an epidemic. Uh, to low testosterone is crazy, man. It is. Um, it's really crazy. And again, people don't. In 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 you know, general practice, what's was crazy that he said he went to a a, a hormone specialist. Yeah. Usually, general practitioners, if you're in the range, you know, which is 300 to 1100 usually. Uh, you know, so if you're at 300, even 290. So do they think that because he's so young, it's just going to naturally spike back on its own? I think they're afraid of. Uh, having him do something that's permanent. You know, t- if he went on testosterone, yeah. that's it. He ain't going off because now he's going to, whatever little he makes, it's gone. Yeah. And he could impact his fertility. That's probably the other thing because if he wants to have kids later on, mm-hmm. then he would have to go on a fertility protocol on top of it, which would include, like I, what, what I said earlier, which was HCG. Well, mm-hmm. I imagine too, when he when he went in to see his doctor, if he doesn't have any other markers that are showing that the effects of having low tests are affecting that in his body, they're going to take the chance and just say, let's see what happens. Yeah. But it, uh, really unfortunate that there's no plan behind Behind that for him, right? You know, I didn't mention to him, but you know, there. You just recently talked to the the guys over at Juve, and they've actually started to show some case studies of people that are using that yes. to raise testosterone levels. A little bit more expensive to 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 try, but um, you know, there's some. We had a friend, Mike. I remember he he did that exactly. That was all he was trying to do was, mm-hmm. can I use the Juve light to raise my testosterone? He was in the 400 range, but he took it all the way up to 750. Yeah, yeah. The, the the I'd the, be trying everything if I was him. Yeah, well, the way that red light therapy works is it it's a it actually causes the cells mitochondria to produce more ATP, so they start to become more effective. So when you shine the light, no joke, this is no joke, on your testicles as a man. Mm-hmm. It'll make the 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 I think the lighting cells is where they called in the testicles produce more testosterone, and so they've shown this in a couple loose studies and some anecdote. I've had a, a few people who've measured their testosterone notice results from that, but uh, but yeah, it's disheartening to hear that mm-hmm. that, that that it sounds like the doctor was kind of like you know yeah, uh, dismissive exactly. Our next question is from Kaylee from Oregon. Hey Kaylee, how can we help you? Hey, how's it going? Good. Um, so my question for you guys is um, how to po- how to um, promote like longevity through powerlifting and address muscle imbalances. I've been um, powerlifting for about a year and a half now, and um, the first year I was doing super strong, hitting new PRs every month. Um, things are going great, and then within the last six months, I've had two or three different issues that have. Um, either cause me to stop training for an extended period of time or have to completely change what I've been doing. Okay. So, you're, so have you done any focus on mobility during this period of time or are you still lifting heavy? I have been still lifting heavy. I've started addressing mobility recently, but I don't really have like a plan. I don't really know where to start with that kind of stuff. Okay, good. You you know, this is like, we just talked about this on an episode about how every modality has its strengths and its weaknesses, right? right. Like Mm -hmm. in powerlifting. It's three lifts. Yeah, it is. (laughs) And one, but one of the best things about it, I mean, the, the strength comes on like crazy. The muscle comes on like crazy. The metabolism boosting benefits from it come on like crazy. But then the drawback is you're working in the same plane all the time, and this is where the hips, the knees, mm-hmm. the back all start talking to yeah, you. Yeah, you know, one of the challenges with with fitness, especially if you enjoy what you're doing, it sounds like you really like powerlifting quite a bit, 
It reminds me. It reminds me of the. Yeah, sorry. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Okay. So. It's okay. It reminds me of the phrase, uh, "You want to have your cake and eat it too." So the reason, the, the the meaning behind that means, it's you have your cake and you want it, but then you eat it and it's gone. So you want both. I want my cake, but then I want to eat it, but then it's gone. So you feel like you're torn. What do I do? So. The reality is you can't have both, right? You can't continue yeah. to lift heavy and push your body and improve the mobility or at least solve the root reasons why you're injuring yourself. You have to focus on one or the other. Now, here's what's going to happen if you continue to focus on lifting heavy. Not only are you going to re-injure yourself, but you're not going to get any stronger because nothing prevents progress like an injury or a muscle imbalance. Now, here's what happens if you focus on mobility for a while. Will you lose some strength in your core lifts? You will, but you'll Im dramatically improve your mobility, potentially solve the root reason of why you're hurting yourself, mm -hmm. and then you'll get stronger faster than you did before and surpass what you were doing before. So this is all part of the plan, and it's going to require you to move away from the thing that you're so passionate about, but because you're so passionate about it, you got to focus on something that will improve your longevity and your performance. Yeah, you got to shift in and out, and and you got to phase out of what you're doing in order to then reinforce uh, your joints, so you can keep like you're seeking for that longevity in those lifts. So it just needs to be more planned out. So there's ways for you to work specifically on uh, unilateral training, mobility exercises, uh, and and then build yourself a, a ritual and routine. This is why we also created our, our Prime program is to to constantly assess yourself, assess. Uh, the quality uh, of your joints and, and the movement of your joints and, and if they're supported. So uh, to go through just those three tests, you find out a lot about uh, what's going on with your shoulders, with your knees, with your ankles, uh, you know, with your neck, everything else involved, uh, and then figure out how to take just those few exercises specifically uh, and ritualize them, uh, you know, in the morning and throughout the day while you can still, uh, you know, get back to your, your main core powerlifting lift. Kaylee, have you followed the uh, free webinars that we've done? No. Oh, she froze. Oh, she has like, yeah. <laughs> okay. That happened to me twice today. Yeah, well, she'll hear this anyway. So yeah. uh, I, I, I know where you're going. I think she should go and go to our mapsprimewebinar.com, follow the webinar, see where she's finding uh, any imbalances. And a routine that I would recommend to her would be the following. I would recommend priming before and after every workout and then switching entirely to unilateral training uh, for at least a couple months uh, which means she's not going to do her favorite you know po you know power lift lifts but that's okay you know it's like uh, pulling an arrow back you got to mm -hmm. you pull it back before it takes off moving forward I could see some value in not completely eliminating the list because she's so you, the, it's this is sport specific a little bit right so where but I would definitely bring the load way down right mm -hmm. so maybe I would do a lot of mobility with technique work. So I'm never going to be moving above 50% of what I can handle. I'm going to go do a lot of mobility work that I'm going to, it's like, we've talked about this on the show before, like something like this. And it, I think we've all experienced this, right? So let's say I'm really working on getting my, my squad up, but then I'm, I'm noticing these. I mean, this was to me today. Okay. So today, uh, I, Sal was training legs. I was training legs. I would have loved to like crush them like he did, but immediately like, I could feel my hips talking to me. So then what did I go over and go do? I was like on the floor doing 90-90 yeah. mobility work, working on stuff of like all my pelvic control. Then I was going over doing uh, lateral stability with single leg deadlifts, really light weight and trying to control it. Like, you know, th this is what this person needs to do. Like you've got these issues, your body's talking to you, regress regress back a little bit, focus on mobility. I don't think it means you necessarily have to get rid of the lifts, but you definitely don't want to be loading it. Well, heavy. think of it this way. It's like you're, you know, we've used this analogy before, but it's like you're building this amazing house and you just start building it. You're, you're now at the frame and then you notice the foundation is messed up. Do you keep building the whole house? No, you stop. You take a step back. Oh, we got to fix the foundation. Because what ends up happening if I build the whole house with a messed up foundation? I'm not only wasting my time, but my whole house is going to have to get torn down at some point. So 
This is all part of getting stronger. Now, the reason why I recommended that she switch entirely to unilateral training is because I understand her mindset. Yeah, the, tempta I'm very, the temptation. I'm right? very similar. Yeah. You put me under a barbell with a squat, or you give me a barbell in my hands when I do a deadlift. You start stacking plates. And that's it, man. Yeah. My, then my ego takes over, and I'm like, let's see what happens. I feel good. Let's see how much I can lift. The only way I've ever successfully gotten my body to balance out was almost to eliminate those exercises mm. for a little while. No, so my a, mindset's That's different. a very good point. It's a very good point, because we're all guilty of that. You're all, Especially when you've been doing mobility for a while and you're feeling great because yep. mm -hmm. there's that temptation of like, wow, I feel really I did good. It. Yeah. Let's keep I going. feel really good. Let me see what today, if I could pull some good weight today. So no, that's a good point. Our next question is from Tilson from Texas. Hey Tilson, how can we help you? Hey guys. Uh, so I've got a question about, um, ankle and hip mobility. So since you guys started doing the uh, those Prime Pro seminars, I started incorporating the Combat Stretch, the 90-90, and Froggers quite a bit. Um, I discovered that my hips and, and my ankles, but a lot of my hips were really, really tight. And uh, since I've been doing those for the last few months, it's substantially helped. But um, my squat form, I still struggle to do a body weight squat and keep my toes pointed mostly forward uh i kind of have to keep my feet turned really heavily outward in order to keep a good form or i'll roll forward or my ankle or i mean uh, my heels will come up so i'm trying to figure out what to do to improve because i feel like i've plateaued with the 9090s and the combat stretch uh and the froggers as well so i'm trying to see what what to break that plateau with Okay, great question. So so there's a lot more than just those mobility movements that you named. So you went on and you watched the webinar and Adam went through, he was the one that taught that one. And by the mm -hmm. way, if, if you're watching or listening to this, I uh, highly suggest you go check this out. I think it's mm -hmm. primeprowebinar.com. Adam picked his favorite movements that he likes to teach, but those were a few movements. There's literally hundreds of movements. Um, and when you, when you hit a, a roadblock with one, that doesn't mean you're done. It doesn't mean that your ankle mobility can't improve anymore. It's probably a good idea now to utilize other mobility movements. It's no different than exercises in the gym. When you're trying to develop your shoulders, for example, and you hit a plateau, sometimes what you need to do is do a different exercise, a different stimulus on the body. So I would recommend if you don't have access, do you have access to Prime Pro, the actual program? Yeah, actually, after I did the webinar, I bought both Prime and Prime Pro uh, in the bundle last year. So excellent. I've been, yeah, I've been kind of following those as well. Um, but like I said, I, I just kind of hit a wall. It feels like, and I'm not sure I, I haven't been sure what to do to improve that. Well, the, a couple of things too. keep in mind, just like, uh, weight loss and, and muscle building, like it's, it's not always linear, right? So it's not, just, just because we're seeing progress in mobility doesn't mean you're going to have, especially if you're also lifting too, are you lifting too? Yeah. Uh, actually I just finished anabolic as well. So <laughs> right. So if, I mean, if, if we were all focused on mobility and you weren't lifting it, you got to understand that when you go and you strength train, it kind of conflicts with becoming more mobile too, unless you're really challenging the in range of motion, you're not loading it very much. So every time you go and load that bar and you probably push higher weights, that's making it that much more challenging to work on the mobility. So, but that doesn't mean you can't do both. You absolutely can do both, but just understand that that kind of conflicts sometimes with working on your hip and ankle mobility. So it took me almost a year and a half, two years to get to where I'm at right now. And a lot of times that meant uh, today I was going to lift, but you know what? I care more about my mobility right now and improving that. So I'm skipping the lift. I'm doing all mobility work for the day because that was such a focus. And I knew that if I were to go and lift heavy that day, I may not see the same progress on my mobility. And that was my main focus. So un be, be patient with yourself a little bit. If you're both strength training and working on mobility at the same time, uh, it's going to probably take a little bit longer. Yeah, a lot of these things take a long right. time to correct if it's been years of patterning in a certain direction too. So uh, you got to give yourself uh, some time to, to be able to really like solidify that signal. Uh, have you been doing toe squats and, and, and such, uh, you know, in terms of like ankle mobility besides the combat stretch? Uh, no, the combat stretch is the primary one. Um, I can't remember the name of the, some of the movements in uh, Prime that I've followed as well, but 
I've tried focusing a lot more heavily on the stuff that target the ankles okay. and uh, and the hips. I would the yeah, combat would, stretch is the primary. Try one. it out. Try the toe squat. Try it with like a lacrosse ball, like squeezing between both ankles, and and try and and, and work on that and. and Focus on another exercise that will actually help to, you know, maybe even push you a little bit further in that direction. Yeah, here's the other thing about about mobility. Mobility responds exceptionally well to frequency. Exceptionally well. Okay, so when it comes to strength training, frequency is great, but at some point you get diminishing returns. You can't work out five times a day every single day and expect to see strength gains. It's just too much. But with mobility, if you do it once a day versus two times a day versus three times a day, the more you do it, the better you and faster you improve. So it's just one of those things. If you're not doing it daily, do it daily. If you are doing it daily, do it twice a day. Literally increase the frequency. Each time you increase the frequency, you'll see an improvement in your mobility. I also see some value back to what Justin says. I want to piggyback off of what he said because I think there's a lot of value in this. So let's say I'm following like maps anabolic. This is where I'm going to interchange some exercise. So MAPS Anabolic, say, calls for a, a, a traditional barbell back squat that day. Instead of doing a traditional barbell back squat, I'm going to do those tippy-toe squats that Justin's talking about and work on depth and range of motion and ankle c- control and strength. Like, that's going to become a priority. So I'm still squatting, but the the focus is different. On deadlift, man, then the next the couple days later, I've got deadlifting. So instead of going mm-hmm. barbell deadlifts, I'm going to do, like, single leg dumbbell yes. deadlifts. And to add to that, right. too, in the single leg, um, I mean, we have some videos that kind of cover this, but uh, when you're doing your single leg, making sure that your ankle doesn't turn in, like, and, and your toes are turning out, which is the external rotation is something that you're trying to correct. So, you know, really slowing down and, and being focused focused on when that tends to break and want to move, uh, you, you know, would be the focus of in the intent of the exercise. Awesome. Okay. All right. Fantastic. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. Thank you guys for taking my question. I, uh, I appreciate it. I appreciate everything you guys do for everybody. So thank you guys. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things with, um, with mobility, like the frequency is a big one for me. I, I've, I, the most limber and most mobile I ever was, was when I was doing uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And this was four or five days a week of jiu-jitsu, which is you're always being stretched and put in different weird positions. And then on top of it, two or three times a day, I'd get down on the floor and do stuff. It, when I do mobility once a week or twice a week, I see a little bit of an improvement. It's like the yeah. more I do, the faster I improve. And it's not like that with other forms of exercise. You know, you can't do that with strength training, for example. Yeah, our body just changes all the time, and you have to just consider if you are strength training, which you brought up, Adam, too. Like it, it's going to affect like the progress you're making, mobility wise, and you, you know you're sort of you got to like weigh it out based on what your needs are specifically right then and right uh, now for your body. And so to to be able to kind of weave in and out of strength training versus mobility training, something to always consider. Yeah, this I mean this is also why we always talk about the even our programs as as well written as they all are that you should mold them to your specific goals. You know, I think there's nothing wrong with him running maps on a ball. It's a great program to be in right now, but because he's so heavily focused on mobility, this is for sure where I'm going to interchange some exercises. It's just, mm-hmm. if your if your goal at that time is more of that and not squat PRs or deadlift PRs, then I'm going to, I'm going to replace those movements with movements like them that are going to train the same muscles, but the focus is now on like stability, control and mobility, right? And range of motion. So this is where I think that you should interchange it because here's the deal. If you do, even if you have great high frequency on your mobility and then squat day comes around <clears throat> and you load the bar heavy because sure. you're in strength phase, sure. your your default pattern is going to come out when the, when the body doesn't know any better. Like you, you put a bunch of weight on there. It's going to do whatever it needs to do to get that weight back up. So that's hard to do that while you're also trying to make mobility gains, right? Or a range of motion gains and stability gains. So I would, I would interchange a lot of the barbell exercises for for unilateral stability type training and and you could still follow maps anabolic but that needs to become the priority especially if you've hit a plateau that's great advice look if you like the information that we provide on the podcast go to mindpumpfree.com and go check out some of our written guides we wrote them ourselves so we know they're phenomenal we have guides on everything from how to develop a better midsection flatter abs better legs develop your butt we even have uh, guides for becoming better personal trainers so if you're a trainer you can even find some great information. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find the three of us on social media. You can find us on Instagram. Justin can be found at mindpumpjustin. You can find me at mindpumpsal and Adam at mindpumpadam. 
running gyms for as long as I did, most people, a lot of people don't follow programs. What would you call Mondays in the gym? International what? Chest day. Chest day, right? Yeah. All the benches were taken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, you know, everybody's doing the bench press. And of course, the squat rack back in those days had yes. dust all over it. And nobody was using it. So it makes a big difference to follow a program just simply to prevent you from neglecting. 